Be bold. Be brave. Be extraordinary. Be vulnerable. Be real. Be curious. Be true. Be you. Welcome to Trusting Your Gut with world-class energy intuitive Katherine McIntosh, a show designed to awaken you to enjoy the process of evolving. Have fun along the way and learn to listen to those silent in-between moments. You are the expert of your own life and nobody knows more about the next steps to take in your journey than you. So please listen to your gut and discover what's waiting for you to explore. Here is your host, Katherine McIntosh. All right. Welcome, everybody, to this week's show. I'm so excited to be here. And today we are talking about something that probably will impact all of you. So no matter if you're sensitive or intuitive or maybe you work in an office full time or you're a parent <laughs> or you're in a relationship, this topic can really apply to absolutely everyone. And, you know, I think it's, it's something that I'm, that I think is mis talked about or mis like conceived. So this is about keeping your energy clear. And we all know that when our energy is clear, we're happier. We have more energy. We have more vitality. We look younger. We attract more abundance into our life. We attract the people and things that we want to be experiencing. And when our energy isn't clear, we're more likely to feel drained. We're more or less connected to our intuition. We're, you know, we might experience depression or a lethargy. And so keeping your energy clear really is an amazing way to create the life you want to live. Because if you're not happy, why are you here? <laughs> right? If you're not fulfilled, why are we on this earth? And my personal belief is that we're on this earth to have an incredible, adventurous experience of love, laughter, joy, and living. And of course, that life experience isn't absent of those hard moments, but those hard moments that we all experience in our lives are meant to help us evolve. They're meant to help us grow. And the truth is, hard experiences usually occur when we're not living our best life, when we're not connected. Now, that doesn't mean that when you're having your best life, you won't experience things that are heartbreaking or cause some pain or some stress or some strain. It's part of life. But if you're somebody who is living full out the life you're meant to be living, then you will be attracting energies you want to be attracting. You will be having new opportunities come into your world. You'll meet people that you've always wanted to meet. Your bucket list will begin to reveal itself and unfold and things on your bucket list will come true. And it just life happens a lot easier. And so when we're not living our best life, we can you know, basically have a lot of life events that basically it's the universe's way of letting us know we're off track. We're off course. We're not quite right where we need to be. And, you know, you might be in the relationship you're supposed to be in. You might be in the job you're supposed to be in, but perhaps you are allowing old patterns or old thoughts to, you know, increase your fear levels or increase your stress levels. And a lot of times the universe works in mysterious ways. And so it is constantly inviting us to become the best version of ourselves. And so today's topic is all about keeping your energy clear. And what I specifically want to talk about is this concept that most people think they need protection, right? So the world is this amazing place. The world can also be dangerous. The world can be scary. It really depends on the way you see the world. And all of us are visual, auditory, and sensory beings. And so we pick up information in lots of different ways. 
And so if you go around and let's say you go to a place where maybe the energy isn't really fun, it's not clear, maybe you, you know, somebody road rages at you and you're like, oh my gosh, I need protection from this person. I actually have a different point of view. And I think that if you listen to today's topic and you listen to today's show, that it might open your eyes to a new way of training your brain to exist differently. And here's my personal point of view is we don't need protection because when we go to protect ourselves from the way we've been taught. So I'll give you guys an example. When I was 28 years old, I decided it'd be an amazing idea to shave my head. I had just gotten into grad school, right? Maybe I was 27. It was grad school. I was moving from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the good old Midwest, to Boulder, Colorado to get my master's in somatic psychology. So I was really fascinated by studying the mind-body connection. And in order to sort of commemorate my new journey, I was leaving a terrible marriage. I'd gotten really sick. I learned to heal myself. And I wanted to explore more this mind-body connection and the power of our thoughts. And so to commemorate on my mother's, I don't know, 60-something birthday, I decided to show up at her birthday with a shaved head. So I had shaved my head. And in the process of shaving my head, I was extremely sensitive to energies all around me. So I went to a metaphysical store. I bought all these oils. I got all these crystals. I bought sage and Palo Santo. And I went into this, I need to keep myself clear. I need protection. I'm really sensitive. I'm going to need to protect myself from energies that I want to avoid or don't want to sort of permeate my rose-colored lens experience. And I remember spending a lot of energy and a lot of effort on this idea of protection. And the more I went into protection, guess where my focus was? My focus was on making sure that I was protecting myself from the energies I didn't want to experience. Kind of an oxymoron, because the way that you avoid experiencing the energies you don't want to experience is by focusing on the energies you do want to experience by opening up your heart, by keeping your body language sort of open, your posture open, your eyes open, your ears open. And so when we go into this idea that we need to protect ourselves right? I've had several experiences of people wanting to attack me, whether it was physically or verbally or emotionally. And we're taught that if you're getting attacked, you should sort of close down your energy. You should protect, you should shield. And I don't really believe in all of that. Yes, there is benefit in surrounding yourself in like your own little bubble of joy and magic and white light and whatever else. But in order to go into protection mode, you actually end up collapsing your posture. You end up closing down your heart a little bit. And when you do that, your nervous system dysregulates. Your endocrine system shuts down a little bit. And all of a sudden, your digestive system, right, does not process as appropriately. Why? Because a contracted energy signals that you're in survival mode. And when you're in survival mode, you activate the four F's, which is fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And, you know, if any of you, I think most of you know what fight and flight is. Freeze is you just kind of freeze, right? That's that like panic. You don't know what to do. You can't move. And then there's a fawn. And fawn is sort of a behavioral survival instinct 
and it especially occurs in people who are in abusive relationships or in abusive situations or scenarios. And what fawn is, is the need to please the people around them so they don't attack, so they don't get upset so they don't fight. And fawn is probably, a lot of you might be surprised to hear something that you adapt if you were raised in dysfunctional situations. So if you were in and out of foster care, you might do fawn. Let me put on a act to fake that I'm happy, to fake that everything's okay when it's really not okay. But if I show that it's not okay, I might receive abuse or I might receive, you know, things that I don't want to occur. And so this idea of protection really puts us in a state where we've activated the survival instincts. And when we activate survival instincts, everything goes into survival. So digestion, right? The heart, the kidneys, the bloodstream, the nervous system, all of it shuts down like as much as it needs to in order to reserve resources so that if you really are in fight or flight, if you really do need to survive a scenario, all of your energy is sort of um, hibernating so it can be used at the moment of attack. And I don't personally, I think there's another way. And this other way is easier. It's kinder on you. And guess what? It'll open your eyes to, instead of focusing on what you need to protection from, it will focus on what you can begin to create, what you can receive, what you can attract. And so when we raise our vibration, we raise our visibility to being attacked. (laughs) And so, you know, I was having a conversation with my son last week because he has big dreams and big aspirations and some kids were not being so nice to him, making fun of his abilities. And I said, do you know why they're making fun of you? And he said, no, mommy. And like, they don't like me. I said, well, I don't quite think it's that. And so we went on to have this conversation and I invited him to look at some of his um, idols, some of the people that he really wanted to be like. And I said, do a lot of people on, in the planet, on the world, in the planet, on the planet, in the world, do they attack this person? He's like, oh yeah, mom, lots of people talk bad about this person. I said, what about this person? Do they talk bad about, oh yeah, mom, everyone talks bad about this person. And I said, mm-hmm. and I said, are they people that you want to be like, like the, his, his idols? And he said, yes, mom. And I said, so if you think you're going to try and be like them, how many people do you think are going to try and talk bad about you, put you down? And he's like, oh my gosh, so many. And I said, so what are you going to do about it? And he said, I'm not going to let what other people say about me bother me. And I said, bingo. Because when we, when we let those sort of energetic attacks bother us long term, it sets up a pattern in our system that then sort of sends a signal to our brain, a signal to our gut instincts that we're constantly under attack. And I don't know about you, but being in a 24 seven war zone is something that most of us like to avoid. And there's been studies of babies that who were raised in war zones and from a very young age, they have a very different experience with trauma in their bodies. They have a very different experience of survival. And a lot of them end up shutting down and having a hard time sort of resourcing their, their gifts, their capacities and their abilities. And so this idea that you need protection. Yes, we might need protection, but what's actually true is we need our 
awareness. And so when you go into protect mode, you energetically collapse your system and you shut down your hyper like in tune abilities to be aware. And so not only now do you need protection, you now just shut off your awareness that is sort of highly sensitive to lots of different energies. And so it actually drains your energy, can cause fatigue, can stifle your creativity, can inhibit your natural gifts. And so it, yes, we do need protection, but from a completely different perspective, the greatest form of protection is your awareness. The more aware you are, the more safe you can be. And I could tell you stories for days about moments where I was like, wow, how was I so aware at that moment? Right. My coach used to tell all the other players on my soccer team, can't, why can't you be like more, more like Catherine? She always knows where the ball's going to be before the ball gets there. She always knows where to go to make the best play. And most of you already know where to go to make the next play in your life that matches where you want to be and what you want to create. The problem is, is that so many of us are far too concerned about what we're trying to avoid that we don't always hear or can't always listen to our intuition. And so it sort of is a catch 22 in which damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? And this idea that that your awareness could be the greatest source of protection. So when you're aware and you're willing to be aware and you want to be aware, you start receiving information from everywhere. And here's the deal. If you believe that it's possible, then you'll start receiving information that matches all the possibilities. If you believe it's hard, you're going to need protection. You're going to need attorneys. You're going to need, right? Yes, you might need those things for life events. But on a whole, what we need more than protection is our awareness. Because the more aware we are, the more we're able to avoid circumstances we don't want to find ourselves in. And I'm going to give you a couple examples from my own personal life. So I believe I was in Europe somewhere and got the hit to, to take a different route, right? To go a different way, you know, and I basically avoided a three hour traffic jam. (laughs) When I was in South America, I avoided a strike that could have put me in a very dangerous situation because I decided to, instead of take the bus, walk, which would have taken me far longer, but I avoided the dangerous situation I could have found myself in, right? Um, There's another example that I wanted to give that was quite profound. Oh, years ago, um, we were planning trips and we were planning sort of my, uh, my tour, my, where I was traveling to facilitate classes and workshops all around the world. And I think we ended up taking a last minute trip or changing the dates of a trip. I believe we were going down to Florida and we changed the dates, excuse me, And in changing the dates, we avoided a pretty disastrous flood that had happened in Colorado and our house just missed. Now we almost moved into a home that if we would have moved in that home would have been right in the middle of the floods and we probably would have experienced a lot of damage. And so I'm saying this to you because that is protection. That is the moment. Now, I have only been attempted to be robbed once. I was in a pretty dangerous neighborhood in the Midwest when I was living there. And it was a non dangerous time to be there. I was next to a coffee shop. You know, the area was 
most of the time relatively safe. We just happen to be parked at the wrong place at the wrong time. And these two younger kind of hoodlums tried to steal my wallet. (laughs) And my awareness was not to give them the wallet, but to scare them with my energy. And I did, and they ended up going away. My friend and I were both safe. Nothing happened. And she said, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. You scared the, how did you do that? And I was like, I just, I knew in the moment what to do. And here's the deal is most of us know in the moment, especially in those moments where our life is at stake or we're in danger, we know in the moment exactly what to do. So we're not freezing. We're not, maybe we're fight or flighting, but we know exactly what to do. And so when you put your protective guard up as if you need to avoid situations, what you're also simultaneously doing is you're contracting your energy from receiving some of the biggest gifts from receiving abundance, from meeting the people you've always wanted to meet, from having those sort of serendipitous interactions. And serendipitous interactions are never serendipitous. It's because you've created an energy in your body that is clear, that tells the universe exactly what you want, that gets you in a way that you open yourself up to receiving even more. And protection does the exact opposite. It shuts down your ability to increase your receiving. And so if you're asking the universe for a lot of money, you're asking the universe for a miracle, but you are too busy in fear, contracting your energy, worrying that something bad is going to happen. (gasps) Oh my goodness. Guess what? You just lowered your vibration. You lowered your capacity and ability to receive. You then also put a target on your little X, right? That allows energies you're trying to avoid to be attracted to you. So one of the ways to change that, to sort of shift that is to what? take a step back, open your body language and start asking, right, for ways in which your body can communicate to you. And this is one of my favorite exercises. I actually teach it in my um, intuitive energy course. So I teach healers, energy workers, massage therapists, acupuncturists, coaches, therapists to to how do they increase their intuition so they can increase their profits, so they can have a more successful business, but also so they can make a bigger impact. People who are sensitive and intuitive want to make a bigger impact. And if you're contracting your energy, you're not going to be able to make a bigger impact. You're going to miss the moments of magic, right? And so when you're contracted, you literally cut out these sort of magical moments from occurring serendipitously. And so really it's not serendipitous, it's your energy aligning. And when you keep aligning, you open up what you can receive when you need protection. So here's a little exercise that anyone can do anywhere at any time. Um, And you can do it eyes open, eyes closed. I sort of teach this as an eyes closed version because it's important to sort of listen. And so when you're intuitive, when you're aware, you are more sensitive but you are also more gifted. You are also more open to receive and you have this deep desire to make an impact. And so when you can keep your energy clear, when you can stay in alignment with the life you say you want and your vibration, 
sort of the quality of energy that you are emitting out in the world, it's hard to emit, emit a really powerful, bright energy out into the world when your physical body is collapsed, when your posture is collapsed. And so in order to keep your vibration raised, it's not about protecting It's about creating. It's about tapping in, tuning in to that awareness, to those gut instincts. And here is a practice that you can do in your life to be able to increase your awareness, which simultaneously increases your protection because you'll know not when to go somewhere that might be dangerous or avoid a traffic jam, or you'll know where to go to meet the people that you're meant to meet. The more open you can be, the better. And so here's a little practice. You're just going to close your eyes and feel free for me. I'm going to do it on my belly. You're going to put your hands somewhere on your body. You can do belly, you can do heart, you can do kidneys, lower back, you can do butts, your butt and thighs, wherever it is. And actually, I'll do it on my butt and thighs today. So wherever it is, you're going to put your feet flat on the floor, kind of sitting upright. You're going to close your eyes and you're going to ask your body to soften the muscles, the tissues, the eyes the jaw, the throat, just going to ask all the muscles and tissues and bones in your body to surrender, to soften. And then taking your hands and putting them somewhere on your body, leaving your jaw sort of relaxed so your mouth might open just a little bit or a lot, no right or wrong. and then putting those hands exactly where you would like them on your body. And you're going to ask this part of your body, what does it have to say? Now, you might not hear what it's saying in words at all. But what you might sort of receive as energetic information. It might be a color, might be a sensation. So what would you, what do you have to say? What would you like to communicate? Right? Now for me, I've got my hands on the backs of my thighs. And what I heard was I feel trapped, right? The sensation was just a little bit like a, like a contracted energy. And, you know, for me personally, the area of my body I've struggled with the most is the backs of my thighs. And so no wonder why it's sending the message. It feels trapped, right? And so you can do this on a body part and you want to just keep asking. So I'm going to do it on my on my belly and you can just say, okay, body, what would you like to belly? What would you like to communicate? What do you have to say? Okay. And then you just listen. Now you might yawn. That's an answer. You might feel tired. That's an answer. You don't necessarily need to hear in words. I just have been practicing for 20 years, how to translate energy into words that match the energy I'm perceiving. And so then you can ask, what else would you like to communicate? Right? I heard I'm tired. Great. What are you tired of? (laughs) Right? And you did like, I got the word pretending and it's like, okay, cool. What are you pretending? And you can continue asking these questions over and over and over again to connect. But guess what? The more I ask those questions, the more I'm clearing my energy. The more I'm releasing those unknown sort of sticky places that we stick ourselves with. And 
you know, it's really important to take time to get to know your body because your body is your greatest resource in this lifetime. Truly is greatest resource. So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back after the break and talk a little bit more. So stay tuned and don't go anywhere. Home Times TV. Do you trust you? Do you trust your body? What if the key to unlocking the weight, pain, suffering, fear, anxiety, addictions, traumas, and sorrows was already inside of you? Learn to love the skin you are in so you can create the body, business, and life you love. Everyone always says you can't explain what Catherine does, you just have to experience it. From Hollywood actors to New York Times best-selling authors to some of the world's wealthiest and most successful, no two experiences are the same. For private sessions, online courses, live events, and the latest book Jack Canfield calls Game Changer and should be required reading for everyone, go to katherinemackintosh.com. K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E-M-C-I-N-T-O-S-H.com. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust, spheric approach. Own Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Own Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Own Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat. Eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. All right. So welcome back from the break. We are going to continue our discussion. And so why would it be valuable to put your hands on your body and ask that body part what it has to communicate? So the analogy is it's sort of like, you know, making a meal and cleaning up after that meal, doing the dishes, but you leave all of the food from the like from that in your sink and you never, and you don't clean it after a couple of days, that food that no one's eating, that you are disposing of begins to smell. It happens if you leave it in your garbage for too long. Right. And so when you don't allow the energies that are in your body to sort of release right? Basically taking out the trash. And so many of us have these hidden stuck energies that hang out in our body all the time. We're just not aware of it. And so this isn't about trying to fix or to heal or to change. It literally is about cleaning house, right? If you were in a house for an entire year with never doing your laundry, never cleaning up your dishes and never like you probably wouldn't last a year, right? Stuff would smell. And it's the same thing with the physical body. It would like a chance to take out the garbage, to clean house, to clear your energy. Why? So, cause the more clear you are, the more you raise your vibration, the more you raise your vibration, the easier it is to attract everything that you're asking for. 
And so here's a really simple technique for anyone who's like, oh, I'm so tired or oh, I'm depressed or oh, my life isn't working or I might lose my marriage or, you know, my husband might leave or my wife might leave or I'm afraid of losing my kids. If you are dealing with absolutely anything, right, and it could be little or big, it doesn't matter. It's this idea that when you clean your energy, you're literally cleaning your house. You're literally taking out the garbage. Why? So that you can, it feels amazing to have a clean house. I love when the woman who cleans my house comes and, you know, there was a couple months where she wasn't coming as regularly and I, she just came and I'm like, oh, thank you. Makes such a difference. So when we clean our own house called our physical body, it makes such a difference. And the way that you do that isn't to interpret or label. It's literally to just give the physical body permission. And so you can do it with me, right? You close your eyes, you can put your hands on your heart or your shoulders. If you have an injury somewhere or you haven't feeling been feeling good about yourself, your belly is a great place to start because in your belly is where you know the majority of your brain cells are, your brain stem cells. And so that that trusting your gut, which is the name of this radio show, is because we have far more brain stem cells in our guts than we do in our brains, right? And so it's tapping into this innate wisdom in and of the body. And so if you struggle to to like yourself, if you struggle with your self-esteem, if you struggle with commitment, putting your hands on your belly is a great place to rewire the old patterns, to rewire the old thoughts, right? And so just kind of rest back and you can put your hands on your lower belly and close your eyes and just take a few deep breaths. And then you're just going to say hi to your beautiful belly. And then you ask, what, what would you like to communicate today? So when I asked that, I didn't get any words. I just got like sort of this like nebulous gray energy. I'm not making it right. I'm not making it wrong. I'm not trying to label it. I'm not trying to figure it out. I'm not trying to diagnose it. I'm not trying to put words to it. I'm really just like, okay, acknowledge the energy. And then you can close your eyes. And if your hands are on your belly or wherever else in your body, what else would you like to communicate? Okay. And I yawn. Okay. Cleaning house, clearing energy. I heard something else, which is like, it's okay. Or I'm going to be okay. Or I'm more than okay. I don't remember exactly, but it's just acknowledging those sort of forms of energetic shifts. Whenever we ask a question, we open the door to transformation and change. We open the door to clarity. We open the door to possibilities, right? And so when we don't ask a question, <laughs> we create a dense environment, right? A dense home, our physical body feels dense. And so closing your eyes and being like, okay, what else would you like to communicate? And on my third question, this time around, my heart just kind of like opened just a little bit. It's like, oh, right? What else would you like to communicate? And the more you just allow the energy, you don't need to define it, frame it, label it, put words to it. It's just like, okay, I acknowledge that. And then acknowledge it. And that is how you can keep your energy clear. And again, I'll say it one more time. The more you keep your energy clear, the more you raise your vibration. The more you raise your vibration, the more you attract abundance and all the things good in your life that you have been waiting to experience and receive. And so my friends, you don't need protection, right? If you do, hire a bodyguard, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> what you need is your awareness to guide you and your awareness, you'll be able to hear it when you are clear. And so let me give you an example, right? There are so many times where I come up with these big dreams that I have for my life. And usually immediately what follows me acknowledging or writing down my dreams is this idea of like, who the heck do you think you are? <laughs> Yeah, you're so welcome. So we're getting feedback. You are very welcome. They say thank you. So I, you know, I I have when I have these big dreams, almost always is this, who do you think you are? How the heck do you think that you're going to be able to bring that to fruition? Are you crazy? Are you nuts? Right. But what I know to be true is that the more that I can keep my energy clear, the more that I can believe that what I'm asking for is coming through me because I'm the person able to actualize it into existence, then that belief continues to create exactly spot on, continues to create a higher vibration. When that vibration is higher, when that vibration is higher, you become a vessel for attraction. And guess what? When you are that level of openness and like, you know, being in space, that's like invisible, but not invisible invisible, but av available, right? So like in Hollywood, especially back in the nineties and two thousands, um, you know, I don't know so much anymore. I don't pay attention to the tabloids. The way it comes through is different, but back in the day when the inquirer was a big thing, when people magazine and, and all these other magazines, and I'm not saying they're not a big thing now, we just are changing. They're not the only form of communication. So the internet has taken over, you know, TikTok and like 15 second news flashes have taken over. But the, the stories of back in the day, the, the actors or Hollywood that, wanted to avoid the press would actually be seen in the press more. Why? Because they were trying to hide. When you don't try to hide and you're like, got nothing to hide, <laughs> bring it on. No secrets. Right. And actually Jennifer Gardner is a good example of this. So back when she and Ben Affleck were going through a divorce, she just said, Hey, we're already going through a hard time. You don't need to make it worse by constantly trying to like get more information out of me, constantly trying to put me in the tabloids. And eventually them putting her in the tabloids went away. She had nothing to hide. She just didn't want to have to deal with it. But there are plenty of famous people that are really good at making themselves invisible. So they're not always seen. There are other actors who don't want to be seen. And guess what? They're the first ones we see. So it's the same thing with your dreams. If you are trying to protect yourself so you can make your dreams come true, you'll probably attract more challenges. If you can keep your vibration raised and open up your energy and be this sort of, um, I don't want to say invisible, but sort of be this space where nothing's wrong, nothing to hide, no shame, nothing to fix, right? And you stay open, that open energy attracts the abundance, the wealth, the magic, the surprises. I mean, I cannot tell you so many times I have met clients who are famous, <laughs> well-known, and I have no idea who they are and I have no idea about them. And when, you know, well-known clients meet with me, I don't go to the tabloids. I don't go to Google. I don't look at what they're saying about them. 
because I don't want to cloud my ability to be clear for them so I can read them and help them with whatever it is they're navigating, with whatever their next step of growth is. If they're going through a hard time and they need sort of a push to evolve and elevate. And so I believe that anonymity and being this energy of space keeps us clear enough to pay attention to those subtle or not so subtle ways in which we need to shift direction. And so you as a being don't need protecting. You need awareness. And when your awareness is like, get a bodyguard, when your awareness is like, don't walk down that dark alley, don't go on that street, don't go here, you will be shocked that is the way that you get protection. And if you have people that are currently, you know, whether they're psychically attacking you or energetically attacking you, what you can do is just be space, get your energy clear and not give it too much attention. Now, if you have a snake in your house, you're not going to be like, Hey, look how open I am. (laughs) You know, let the snake in my bed. Well, no, you're going to be like, okay, let's get the snake out. And so there are lots of ways in order to clear energies that might be trying to get into your space. And then you can sort of set up sort of an energy field, but again, it's not sort of protection from the place of, I have to be careful or I have to be cautious. It's more from the place of I'm creating magic. And if you want to try and attack me psychically, go for it. I am as big as the universe. It can pass through me. I hope that makes sense. Right. And so this really is about how do you allow yourself to be as clean and clear as possible? Focus on your dreams. Get your physical body moving. Yes. Suzanne says boundaries. Right. We all need boundaries. And so there's boundaries. And so if somebody keeps constantly trying to come in my space, it's like, I don't think so. (laughs) snakes not allowed in my bed today or ever (laughs) or ever. Right. And so setting up a platform, but that doesn't mean that I contract. It actually means when we're clear, when we have, I like that Suzanne's labeling as boundaries, when we have boundaries, right. It's like not welcome in my house, not welcome in my space. And so there are a million different ways that you can elevate and expedite your ability to have a greater life, to have more energy. And it isn't in the form of contraction. Almost ever, (laughs) if ever. So I want to invite you to consider what would it be like If yes, you started having conversations with energies that might be in your space, you let them know they're not welcome, right? It's not about fighting them. It's not about resisting them. It's not even about rejecting them. It's like, wow. Like if you look at Oprah, a lot of people talk smack about Oprah. If you look at Elon Musk, a lot of people talk smack about Elon Musk, He doesn't need protection per se from people talking bad about him. He needs to keep elevating his energy so he can do what he's best at, right? So Oprah can do what she's best at. So Richard Branson can do what he's best at. And so you can do what you're best at. So my invitation to you is to elevate your energy, to increase your awareness, to allow your awareness to come through, right? To start paying attention and asking your physical body what it would like to communicate, asking your business what it would like to communicate, asking your heart what it would like to communicate, asking your relationships what it would like to communicate, not to the person you're in relationship with, but to the entity of the relationship itself. Everything is energy. And when we start talking to it, 
it starts changing. We start changing and we start making a bigger impact on all the energies around us. So I want to thank you for being here today, for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please leave a comment, an aha, share this message anywhere and everywhere you can. Make sure you subscribe to whatever channel you're listening to so you get these um, shows every week and um, feel free to share. In the meantime, stay awesome. Keep being you. Don't ever forget who you are and um, to the magic that's inside of you that's waiting to blossom and grow. I look forward to seeing you next time. And thanks for being here. Catherine is not a medical practitioner nor a licensed therapist. She has strong opinions and will express them and truly believes that you are your best advocate for any and every area of your life. If you need medical advice, please consult your physician.